This is the I Will Teach You a Language podcast, episode 166. Welcome to the I Will Teach You a Language podcast. Weekly motivation and language learning tips to help you become fluent in any language. Now, here's your host, Ollie Richards. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the I Will Teach You a Language podcast. Twice a week, when I'm on form, you get these episodes that aim to help you become a better language learner. So I hope you enjoy them. Now, uh, recently I talked about a new project that I'm working on called Conversations. Now, this is, okay, here's, here's the thing. You're learning a language, you're kind of at a upper beginner level, you've been learning for a few months, you, you're past the beginner stage, and you want to be able to understand native speakers, right? So you need to listen to the language being used. But where do you go to get listening material? The beginner stuff in textbooks is kind of too easy for you now, but you can't turn on the radio or watch TV because it's just too hard for you, right? So what do you do? That's what I am creating. I want to make... Now, I am making <laughs> like a library of listening material for different levels in different languages. So, for example, if you are kind of at an A2 upper beginner level in French and you want to learn to understand French people when they speak, um, through with this conversations product what you get is a series of substantial dialogues so not your kind of short 20 second textbook display dialogues but something interesting that's two or three minutes long that's at your level that you can listen to and then you get the transcript and the translations and the word list all that stuff it's like everything that you need to learn to understand native speakers that's what I'm working on. And anyway, the reason I mentioned that is because it's really picking up steam now and we have samples ready in Chinese, French and Italian. And I'm looking for some people to help me test those samples. So if you'd like to help me out and get a few of these samples and just use them and tell me what you think, that would be really, really cool. The best place to do that is to come to the Facebook group which is called Ollie Richards Fluency Mastermind. And you can find that, just go to Facebook and search in the title bar, you'll find it again, it's Fluency Mastermind. Um, but if you're in China or somewhere where Facebook is blocked, you can just send me an email through the contact form on the website, that's that's fine as well. Um, and yeah, I'd really like to get your feedback on this, Let you know, know if you like it or not. And if you do, then I'm going to roll out the full thing in different languages as well, German, Spanish, Japanese. And uh, yeah, so let me know if you're interested in that. I'd like to thank the sponsors of the show. And if you're looking for a reliable, professional language teacher that you can take lessons with anywhere, then italki is the place that you can do that. And you can get a free lesson for $10 worth of credit uh, from italki by going to iwillteachyouralanguage.com forward slash free lesson. Now, we've got a very technical question today. Perfect for those of you who are interested in memory techniques and specifically memory palaces. Let's get into the question from Fletcher. Hi, Ali. Uh, my name is Fletcher. I've been listening to your podcast for maybe two months now or so, a month and a half, something like that. And I've been using memory palaces. I've heard you talk about them and also some other um, experts out there. And I have a question. I was using a simple technique of a supporting image like a bicycle and placing images on that as a way to remember, you know, just like a 10 item list or so. Um, and I find that that sticks really well in my mind and I can remember those images. And it made me wonder, could I do something like that at a memory palace location? So could I put like an image, something simple with, instead of something, you know, with the crazy action and that just a simple image. And then at the various points on that supporting image, like with a bike, say the tire, or the axle or the handlebars, then put the more complicated, um, you know, full image with the bright colors and action and things like that. Um, anyway, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that or knew of anybody that had done that uh, or any ideas. So thanks. Bye. Hey, Fletcher, thank you for a very, very cool question. Um, it's nice to get into some detail uh, with different techniques. And um the thing is that as soon as we talk about this, we're probably going to lose like 99% of the audience. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up and talk about memory, about memory palaces in general and then address your specific point at the end because I think I've, I've got a fairly succinct answer to that, I think. So what is a memory palace? Well, for those of you who don't know, many years ago, so the story goes, um, Simonides was in a banquet 
in ancient Greece. And he was up on the stage and he was talking to the audience. Uh, he was, uh, he was, I think he was asked to perform, um, recite some poetry or sing some songs or something like that for a very wealthy local uh, businessman. And um, at one point during the evening, there was a knock on the door and two people came and asked urgently to speak to Simonides. So he, Simonides rushed outside and talked to these two people who wanted to deliver the message to him. And as they were talking outside, disaster struck. There was an, an, an earthquake or something and the, the entire building collapsed, killing everybody inside. Now, the, the damage was so extensive that when the rescuers came, they couldn't even identify the bodies because they were they were so damaged from the from the collapsed building. But what Simonides was able to do was to remember exactly who was sitting. He was able to identify the bodies by remembering by recalling who was sitting where and in the exact layout of the room. Now the reason he was able to do this was because he would picture himself standing on that stage. And he would go back in his mind and he would see everybody who was sitting at different parts around the room, the table they were at, the, the way they were reclining on the sofa, what they were doing, what they looked like. And by casting his mind back and going round the room bit by bit, he was able to identify all of the, the bodies. Now, it's kind of a macabre tale, but this... Um, so the story goes, was the foundation of using location, the concept of location, as a memory aid. So what you do is not you don't just try to remember a word or a face or a name, but you actually place that word in your mind in a particular location. It could be in a room, it could be on a on on, on a sofa, it could be uh, underneath a chair, and then the fact that you've placed that thing that you're trying to remember in a specific location, it makes it much easier to remember later. That's the fun, that's the foundation of the memory palace technique. So if you were going to apply this as a language learner, then what you'd take is um, you'd start off with a building that you're very familiar with. It could be your living room, it could be the where you went to school, it could be your workplace. And you'd identify certain interesting points around that that building. So let's say you were using your living room. You might identify the sofa, uh, the rug, the table, um, a bookshelf, places like kind of interesting stations around that room. And then what you do is you take a list of words that you're trying to remember in a foreign language. And you'd put one word in one of those stations. And then the the challenge is to create an image in your mind to help you remember that word that links the, the thing that you're trying to remember, the word, and the location it's in. So to give you an example, um, let's say you're trying to remember the um, the Arabic word, the Arabic verb, which is to come home, which is yarawa in, in Arabic, Egyptian Arabic. And um, so what you might do is you might say, okay, I want to remember this word, yarawa, and m- one point in my memory palace which is my living room, is my sofa. So I'm going to put this word, yarawa, on the sofa. <laughs> so far, so strange. But what you do then is you create an image. So you might think to yourself, okay, well, what 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 does this word sound like, yarawa? And for me, um, what kept coming back in my mind was that the, the, the middle sound, the middle syllable in that verb, rao, sounded a little bit like row in English. So what I did was I imagined myself on a rowing machine uh, on the sofa in my living room and I was rowing in order to get home, <laughs> okay? That was kind of crazy, it's weird, but that's kind of the point, right? So then what I would do whenever I wanted to remember how to say to go home in Arabic is I would go imagine myself going around my memory palace and I would get to my sofa and I would see myself rowing on the sofa to get home and I would think row... And that would be enough for me to remember the word. Okay, Now, that's the basic idea of the memory palace. And uh, it's extremely effective. It's the most effective memory technique that I know to remember specific words. Now, it has drawbacks. Um, 
specifically, it can take quite a lot of time and effort to remember one thing. So it's not the kind of, you can't use it to remember everything you learn on a daily basis. It's not fast enough for that. But it's very, very effective if you want to remember specific things. Now, here's where we're going to get to the question, because what Fletcher asked is, can I adapt this technique? And rather than having a room, can I take, for example, a bicycle? And can I place the words I'm trying to remember on different parts of the bicycle? So rather than having the sofa and the rug, can you have the handlebars and the bell and the saddle and things like that? Well, what I would say about that, Fletcher, is that For a start, yeah, it's absolutely possible. You can do anything you want if it works. But what I would encourage you to do is to think about the two key features that make Memory Palace, the Memory Palace technique uh, effective. That is firstly location and secondly recall. Let's look at, let's take those two in turn. Firstly location. So you want to create a mnemonic using the location itself. Now in my example, I used the sofa. That's pretty vivid for me. I can very easily visualize the sofa in my room. Now, can you do that on a bike? I guess you can. If you've got a if you've got a strong image of a bike, then you can you can figure out the handlebars and the um the wheel and all of that. So that's that's possible. You've got to make sure that you know that you that you really know that location intimately. Okay. The second one, which I think is more problematic, is recall. Now the the way that you practice um, recalling words with the memory palace technique is by walking through the memory palace. So let's say that you put 10 words in your living room as the memory palace, right? The way that you would then review those the next day and the next week to make sure that you actually learn them and don't forget them is by walking through the memory palace in your mind. So you walk in through the front door and then you turn left and you go to the sofa and then you go to the rug and, and so on and so forth. And that uh, that systematic uh, journey through the memory palace is how you recall and test yourself on the words you're trying to learn. Now, can you do that using an object like a bicycle? what's the path through the bikes, the bicycle? So imagine you've got a word on the back wheel and then a word on the front wheel and a word on the left handlebar and then a word on the right handlebar. Like, can you walk through that in your mind or trace a path through that in your mind such as, such that it makes like logical sense to you? If the answer is yes, then cool. I think you've basically got exactly the same, um, you've got exactly the same, conditions as a memory palace. I think it absolutely works. Uh, so I think you've just got to think about those things. I would probably, to test this technique, I would create one memory palace using something more traditional like your living room and then another one with a different set of words using something like a bike as per your idea and simply test it. See if, like, do that for a couple of weeks, try to learn the words and then after a couple of weeks, see whether they both perform equally or if one performs better than the other and just go with what works for you with memory techniques the it's all about one thing which is you and your mind and how that works okay that's the only thing that matters so like i i love the fact fletcher that you are like thinking outside the box that you're trying to figure out what works for you and i think the fact that you've come up with this idea in the first place suggests to me that it may well work for you so give it a go and uh, come back and let us know how it goes thanks very much for your question i really uh, really appreciate it if you would like to ask me a question go to i will teach you a language.com forward slash ask. Now at the end of every episode, I'd like to leave you with a resource of some kind on the topic of the show. And um, I have a free memory course that I've created that comes over three days and it's in, it's in three parts, comes over three days. And you learn about the kind of memory techniques that, uh, that Fletcher's talking about here and some other more kind of like really fundamental skills um, to improve your memory so that you can memorize more words in the language you're learning and ultimately speak more fluently with less stress and forgetting as well because who like (laughs) none of us like forgetting right if you'd like to take the free memory course you're more than welcome you can go to i will teach you a language.com forward slash free memory course once again that's i will teach you a language.com forward slash free memory course all one word thank you very much for listening and i'll see you back in the next episode of the podcast